Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and in this week's Marvel Super Heroes Advanced Role Playing Game System Rules, we're going to be talking about more Realms of Magic. Very specific, let's turn to page 32, because we're going to be talking about group magic, group spells, that's right. So uh, it's important to remember that when, first off, when you are talking about casting spells, you can actually cast two spells at one time if they're personal or universal. All right, so two personal, two universal or one personal, one universal, reversed, whatever, uh, on a red feet roll. But when it comes to dimensional spells and when it comes to group spells, you can only cast one at a time. There is no rolling for a feet. That just, no, uh -uh, sorry, it doesn't happen. So uh, only one spell at a time. That's actually kind of crucial here. So, uh, and you can find that right on one of the very first pages before you even get to chapter one in your uh, Realms of Magic book. Okay, so... Uh, what we have here is the idea of how you're actually going to get a group of mages together, magic users, sorcerers, spellcasters, to cast a spell in unison. Okay, first I'm going to read you the way that it actually works in here in the realms of magic with my little spiral book and whatnot. And then I'm going to tell you how I don't think that's cool at all. <laughs> and instead, we're going to, you know, I'm going to talk about my house rolling it. All right. See if you like that one a little bit better. So group spells. These allow the caster to select from a collection of similar personal and universal energy spells. The spells available to each group uh, are called sub spells. Each day, a magic wielder must choose, choose one sub spell listed in his group spell the one he chooses is the only subspell he can use from that group that day. A magic user is allowed to choose the same or a different subspell each day. Note the length of a day could be different on different dimensions. The spells within a group use the same definitions as the personal or universal spell of the same name with three important differences. Group spells use dimensional energy. Uh, a feet roll is only successful on a yellow or red feet roll. The target of the group subspell is not allowed a defensive psyche feat to of uh, roll to, uh, that. They're not allowed a psyche feat roll to avoid the effect, no matter what the normal personal universal definition of the spell says. Okay, so basically to shorten that, group spells, they're either personal or universal. Uh, they are not dimensional energies. But you're going to use these uh, to collect the personal or universal as though they were dimensional, which means personal spell is not going to cost you one hit point per round, and a universal spell is not going to cost you one psyche uh, um, column shift per round. All right. Instead, it's simply going to be actually it wouldn't be uh, per round anyway. It would be uh, upon casting, but it's not going to cost you any psyche in this particular instance. I'll get into later what I think it should cost you now. Uh, the, 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 the extra stipulations are the idea that, Hey man, you can only use one per day. That's cool. And everybody's got to choose what that one is going to be. That's kind of cool and all, except that kind of situates yourself in a sense where now you know that somebody's going to be using a group spell every single campaign. And I'm not cool with that, man. Group spells should be something that almost rarely ever happen. And you know, like when you look at Dungeons and Dragons, that sounds like something they would be doing there. All right. That sounds like something there where you're picking your spells in the beginning of the day and you have no idea what, you know, spells you're going to need. You're just assuming and you're trying to prepare as best you can. This isn't Dungeons and Dragons, brah. I love them using Dungeons and Dragons, but I like this game more. I don't talk about Dungeons and Dragons. I talk about this game. That being the case, uh, I do not think it's cool that you have to pick and choose your own spells. I think that um, on average, there would be some spells that everybody has in common if you're going to have a group of, of magic users. But at the same time, you got to remember, a lot of these guys are going to be working in tandem with each other in so much as, hey, man, do you have this spell? No. Well, we might need it. So I'll have this spell. You get it? So they're creating characters where they've got different spells to begin with anyway. So there's not going to be a whole lot of overlap uh, of course, everybody on average is going to have the shields, the Eldritch shields and, and uh, Eldritch bolts, I'm sure. But, I mean, when push comes to shove, brah, you know, 
not everybody's going to have telepathy. Not everybody's going to have illusions. Because remember, you can also just use dimensional spells for any of those. I feel like using the, the bolts of Balshak, however that's pronounced. I want to use the mists of Morpheus. I want to use the illusions of Icon. Whether you have the contact or not, the fact is that you could still try to cast those as dimensional energies. So why does everybody need the same universal and personal spells, right? Aside from like astral uh, projection, which why would everybody need to astral project in a, in a ceremony, in a seance? It doesn't make any sense. Anyhow, so uh, I'm of the opinion that no. You don't need to decide in advance which spell you're going to use. You can use whatever spells you want to use. Whatever spells you want to use, as long as everybody's got the same spell. If you got a party of five and only three people know this particular spell, well, then only those three people can do it, and the other two people cannot help them. They cannot help them casting that spell, but they could help in other ways. We'll get into that also. So, for right now, I think that as long as you've got the same spell, you're good. You should be able to cast that spell. That being the case, that being the case, uh, from this point on, let's say you want to, just for an example, you're trying to breach the mind of this big gigantic god thing that has come into here. Let, let's say it's freaking Onslaught, okay? Onslaught has come back to the Marvel Universe. Damn it, please don't sell the stuff back to, to Image. Please don't do that. Please don't license it out to Image. I don't want to see Captain America boobs again. All right, just it's not it's not on my bucket list. Anyhow, um, <laughs> what you're instead going to have, uh, you've got onslaught there, and everybody needs to breach his psychic defenses and hit him with a cybolt. Okay, let's do this. So let's say you've got a group of five. Like I said, only three of them have their telepathy spell. Well, these three guys can sit down, these three players can sit down and start trying to uh, attune themselves so that they can cast uh, telepathy and get that cybolt on these guys. Now, they're probably going to want to use universal energy, although they could technically do it with the uh, personal energy also. Remember, you don't have to worry about the whole, like, you got an automatic attack in that regard, but... A tag, you know, using telepathy is one thing uh, for personal, but then turning around and trying to use a cybolt, even as a power stunt, that's that's kind of something else right there, you know? So let's try and use this as a, a, a universal spell. Um, there's something else for you also. They should probably all have it in the exact same way, right? You could say no, fine. If somebody's got telepathy in personal and somebody's got telepathy in uh, universal, Fine, maybe they can use it together. That's a, that's a judge's call. That's a judge's call. Maybe they're going to have to give a certain amount of karma in order to do that. Uh, or maybe their um, uh, attunement is going to be a little bit harder. What do I mean by attunement? The second time I said this, right? Let's get into attunement. It's my opinion that before, anybody can get together and actually start casting a spell against uh, somebody else. It's There's going to be a couple other safeguards to make sure that it doesn't happen right away. Rather than saying, oh, everybody's got to pick the same spell to begin with, eh, forget about that safeguard. Instead, make other safeguards so they can't, so they don't want to keep on. Rather than you saying, oh, here's the rules why you can't do this all the time, how about instead you give them the, uh, the, 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 what's the, what's the word? Basically, they're, the self-regulation, all right? There's another word I wanted to use, but whatever. You allow them to self-regulate themselves. There are certain requirements that must be met before you can cast a spell. One of them is attunement. Everybody's got to tune their minds to each other. Okay? Remember, magic is a very intricate thing. It's not a science, although it also kind of is. But think about it this way. If it were perfectly mathematical, then finding the ability to use a spell through um, chaos magic and... Uh, uh, magic for order and necromatic magics and entreaty magics and Atlantean magics. That's interesting. Plus, there's still the idea of personal, universal, dimensional. There's all these different ways to achieve the same end. All these different ways to achieve the same end. That does sound a lot like math to me. But let's also remember, there's a bigger picture here. So either way, however you're going to do this, everybody's mind has to be attuned to the end goal. So, while there are many different paths to get to, let's say, the number five, okay? You can say two plus three equals five, one plus four equals five, six minus one equals five, 30 minus 25 equals five, all right? 
all these different ways to get to five. The idea is that everybody has to know that the number five is what you're looking for, right? However, you're gonna to get to the number five, everybody has to focus on the number five, okay? I'm just using five as an example, but in this particular case, it would be Cybolt, all right? It would be Cybolt. So everybody's gotta to attune themselves to Cybolt, all right? However, you're gonna get there with your, your Asgardian magic or your Olympian magic or your um, whatever, fairy magic, whatever you're gonna be using, you still have to get to Cybolt. So this is the attu uh, attunement phase. Everybody's gotta make a feet roll, all right? Now the feet roll is simply green. Green, yellow, red, whatever. You, you gotta get a feet roll, you gotta make a feet roll. And it's still gonna take one round to do it. So everybody sits down, you roll the die, and uh, you gotta get it so that you're, you're uh, yeah, just use your psyche, because it's gonna be using your psyche as popularity, right? Because it's still gonna be a dimensional effect even though you're using personal or universal, just like I said at the beginning of the video. So you're still gonna be using a dimensional effect. So you're gonna be using your psyche as popularity and making a popularity feat roll later on. For now, you're just using your psyche. So you can still use it as a green. Uh, so, so green, yellow, or, re or red. And that's how you're gonna be able to attune everybody's mind. Now, if one person gets in the white, you can either choose to wait for this person the next round because everybody else has already gotten there. Everybody else has already gotten there. You're all of like mind. You you can make it so they all have to roll again. Like, oh, something went wrong. Crap. Okay, let's all try and reattune our minds because this person screwed up. That's fine. Or, no, you made the roll. You're there, but this person's not in there. So you guys can choose to go on without her or you can choose to wait for this person to, you know, jump back in and get the, the proper green roll. And you could do it both ways. You could literally, okay, you can choose to go on without her because you guys are in tune, but she, but this person didn't uh, attenuate their minds with you. They didn't attune their minds with you. Um, so you can either choose to go on as is or all of you re-roll and hope that you all get in the green this time. So make it as easy or as hard as you want to make it, judge. Um, so that's going to take at least one round. The next round is to attune the magic. The first round, you were attuning your minds. The next round is to attune your magic, attune the spell itself. Attune, you had to get your mind set on Cybolt. Now you have to get the Cybolt correct. Because remember, this guy could be using, um, uh, you know, voodoo magic. This person over here could be using some other kind of magic. And, you know, this person universal, this person personal. It's all going to be different for the most part. Unless you're in the rare instance, in my opinion, where... Everybody's using the same school of magic and everybody's using the same energy, either personal or universal, all right? In which case, then I would say, okay, fine, let it slide, let it slide. Why the hell not? You know what I'm saying? Um, but other than that, yeah, no, they've got to they've got to roll on the spell also. And this is where it is going to be the dimensional. So you have to roll your psyche as popularity, which means you have to roll either a yellow or a red. All right. Greens and whites are the same. They fail. So rolling your your dimensional or rolling your psyche as pure dimensional energy, meaning you're rolling your psyche as popularity. So you have to roll in the yellow or red to attune the spell itself. Now, once you've done that, now you guys are gonna roll for uh, initiative for the attack or for whatever it is that you're gonna do. If initiative isn't important, if you're just gonna try and read somebody's mind who otherwise can't normally be read, boom, you're in there. You're, you're, there. you're, you're a mobile uh, cerebro for all intents and purposes. Um, you know, and they don't get, remember, they do, if you guys are successful, they do not get a roll to resist. There is no psyche roll for, uh, allowed for them to resist. All right, and psh, that's that. And yes, that's going to include if it's a uh, uh, emotion control, where normally you would get an intuition feat roll to try and resist instead. No, in my opinion, I know that that's what the rules say. And if you're going to go by just what the 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 the, the literature is, just by what the the verbiage is, all right, fine. You caught somebody on a technicality. In which case, why would you ever use um, that ability? Uh, you know, emotion control as a as a, a group spell then, right? So I say no, allow it. No rolls to resist. There's no roll to resist whatsoever. Um, it's up to the judge if you want to say like this body armor, because like if you're going to send an eldritch beam after someone, no body armor? Yeah, that's a hard one, but yeah, why the hell not? Seriously, why the hell not? 
you know, it'd be a really good way to just boom, gotcha, sucker, you know, uh, get an Eldritch crystal up to just start blasting this sucker and just keep on throwing up the crystals or, or, or reinvigorating crystals so it doesn't disappear each round. Go and check it out right before all of these pages um, uh, in the Realms of Magic book, before page 32. You'll find all the different kinds of spells that you can use, excuse me, in the Realms of Magic. Excuse me. So, um, and that's for universal and personal. So when you have something to the effect of uh, uh, two rounds minimum, so that means everybody passes their, uh, their, their attunement of their minds and then everybody passes their attunement of the magic itself, that's a minimum of two rounds before you can actually uh, go and make your attack. Mind you, though, these are, these are being cast as dimensional energies. When you're doing group magic, this is dimensional energy, which means that when you're allowed to go, you do go last in the round. You go last in the round. If you're going against somebody else or another group that's using uh, dimensional energies as or dimensional energies or dimensional energies as a group, then don't forget that that's when you're going to actually care about your initiative because both you're going to go last in the round, but one of you will go before the other person. All right. Um, there's last and then there's true last. <laughs> Let's just look at it that way. So keep all of that in mind. But for the most part, you're going to go last in the round. All right. So that's basically two and a half rounds before you can go. But you can make it even harder. These guys aren't allowed to move while they're doing their group spell. I don't care how they're doing their group spell, man. Whatever the, the little mantra, if they're using a mantra, you know, everybody's om, 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 or repeating some Sufi mantra, you know what I'm saying, to, to get everything working. If everybody's, you know, doing this in tandem, if, I just said Sufi, so let's talk about the whirling dervishes. Everybody's whirling in, you know, the proper uh, uh, format and in pattern and in rhythm with each other. Cool, man. If you're using some, if you're going to do like emotion control, maybe you can do tantric. All right. And you can have two people back to back and they're going to be breathing in tantric rhythm with each other. Let's just get silly with this, man. Just no O faces, no O faces. Um, however you're going to be doing this, if everybody's going to be over top of a, a cauldron and, you know, if everybody's going to be sitting at a seance table holding hands, you know, or if everybody's going to be casting um, the appearance of, you know, like some magical uh, proton pack energy waves into uh, the, 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 the center pillar of Stonehenge or something like that, you know, whatever it is that you're going to be doing, uh, that's what you're going to be doing. And you can't move. You can't move. What are you going to do? You can't dodge. You can't evade because all of your, your focus has to be on what you're doing here. So there is no way to dodge an incoming attack. So what do you do? Well, you probably have to have some kind of defenses, you know, in place. I said that you only have three out of five uh, party members who are capable of even casting this spell in a group. So maybe the other two have to try and distract whatever it is that's, you know, there's a horde of goblins coming. I say I just went Dungeons and Dragons right there. There's a horde of aim agents coming. Somehow the goblins seem more of a threat. Anyway, so these guys are coming at you and, you know, these two guys have to bow, bow, bow and start, you know, trying to beat these guys. I shouldn't say beat them off because that's a, they were back to the old face again. But, you know, Basically, beating these guys back, all right? Get back, get back. Uh, and protect these guys who are in the group. Maybe you don't have a group with you. Or maybe these two are off doing their own little group uh, spell. You know, two people can, can do a group spell, absolutely. Uh, so maybe these guys are going to do telepathy and, and weaken the, the, the bonds. You know, this guy's got a huge size uh, screen on himself. Or he's got, you know, even worse in, in some regards... He's got mental resistance, all right? Resist mental attacks or resist magic. So he's going to go in there and try and counter his spell. We're going to get into counter spells in a future video, maybe the next video. Worst case, I think, two videos from now. But the point is that you get into, you know, you're going to try and, these guys are going to try and break down the defenses. And now these guys over here, it's like, oh, now you've got no defense. Bam, you know? Um whatever it is that you're going to do. So what are you going to do in advance? Well, maybe you're going to spend a round and throw up a, a, a force field, you know? Is is everybody going to just worry about their own force field? Is one person going to cast a force field around everybody? Is somebody else going to cast a force field? Are you going to find a place to hide? What exactly are you going to do? What exactly are you going to do? Um, because once you get into attunement, that's it. You can't move. 
Ooh, something I forgot to mention before. One of my ideas is I love the trance spell. If you've got the trance, uh, not spell, if you've got the trance talent, maybe you don't have to roll to get yourselves into attunement. You still have to roll for the spell attunement, but you don't have to roll for the um, the uh, the mind attunement for all the mages in the group to act as a group. Everybody's got to roll that green or higher psyche feet roll. In this case, you don't have to roll. You automatically, if you've got trance, you're automatically attuned to whomever. You know, uh, if everybody's got trance, man, that just makes it you know that much easier. Doesn't make it faster. It still takes the full round to do that. Uh, but you just don't have to roll. So, hey, save yourself a couple karma points, you know? Uh, save yourself from the doubt of, what if I fail? What if I get in the green? <laughs> so, trance, bang, do it. Um, actually, this is a magical thing I should do instead, right? So, once you, you know, once you've got your defenses picked up, that's also only physical defenses. What about other defenses? Everybody here has heard of the pentagram, right? Listen, Every single group of magic in real world, uh, philosophical, magical, with a K, um, ideals actually uses the pentagram to keep themselves safe. Keep that in mind. That's, that's like kind of crucial, you know? Um, and the, the workings of the pentagram are actually, you know, casting the pentagram. They're actually kind of important, you know, when you think about it. And all of them use it. I don't care if you're Wiccan. I don't care if you're uh, OTO. I don't care if you're Golden Dawn. I don't care if you're freaking Church of Set, Church of Satan, you know, Temple of Set, Church of Satan. You're still going to use the pentagram. You'll invert it. You'll invert the pentagram. But when it's cast on the ground... It's still a freaking five-pointed star, so it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? It's still a pentagram. Um, what do you call it? So these will protect you from the spiritual attacks that could possibly come after you. What about if, you know, ghosts or, or other haunts come after you or demons, you know? <laughs> you don't know. You might have to cast down, uh, you know, like insult the pentagram or something like that. Um keep in mind the idea that the pentagram keeps you safe. So if you're going to be, you know, like if you might be attacked by who knows what, you want to all be sitting in some giant size pentagram, which in and of itself, a one person pentagram is going to take one round to, to cast. Every other person that you want to be able to fit in the pentagram should take another full round because you're talking about like people need space. If your hand goes over top of the pentagram, you're no longer safe. All right. That's important. So if you, you know, doing one of these things and all of a sudden, and, you know, suddenly you're possessed. Ah, take that. Um, but at the same time, if you're trying to just uh, a slight aside of the topic, if you're going to be summoning a demon, you kind of want the demon in the pentagram, not you, because then the demon can't get out. If you're in the pentagram, the demon's free. It, ah, I'm free on the earth. I'm going to just go this way, that way, all over the place. You know what I'm saying? You want the demon cast inside uh, the, the, the pentagram. All right. Anyway, uh, all of that, uh, taken into consideration, it's going to take a lot of time to actually set up this group, the, doing it my way, doing the, the, the house, my, the, the, the professor bill house rules. It's going to take a while to actually set that up. But on top of that, casting the spell, if you're just doing an eldritch bolt and it's just gonna be one boot, gotcha. Okay, it's one round. You all that set up for one bolt. Cool. <laughs> uh, but you might want to keep that bolt going because, like, here's this big... You ever seen uh, X-Men Gold, the big Scythian, that big uh, uh, god from the, the uh, Netherscape? What the hell is that called? The Negative Zone. That Negative Zone god. I think his name was Scythian. You're going to want more than just one round of blasting him with that bolt. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is that you're going to do, you're going to try and read somebody's mind and you know, probe their mind and get invasive and you want to keep an illusion going for a really long time, dude, dude, you're probably going to want to make sure that you have some defenses up, but you're also going to need to be protected for all that amount of time. So you got to keep all of this in mind. You got to cast that spell in advance. Um, and yeah, I would consider doing it with a uh, universal spell instead of uh, a personal energy. So if you're going to put up a shield spell, Eldritch Shield, you probably want to do it universal because you can't have another spell going. You can't cast two spells at the same time, but you can keep a personal shield up while you're doing a, um, uh, a dimension, excuse me, a, yeah, dimensional uh, group spell. All right. The trick is it's still going to be costing you one uh, health point every round. 
that gets costly real quick, real quick. Plus, you can't rebuild the shield once it gets uh, toppled or, or destroyed. If somebody starts, instead of attacking you, they start attacking the shield itself, that shield is coming down and you can't devote the concentration to rebuild it. You can only maintain it, all right? And your judge might not even say that. Your, your judge might say, nope, you can't have two spells going at the same time if one of them is a group spell. Sorry, group or universe, or it's group or dimensional. Uh, me, I'm not quite so heavy handed. I think that you can cast in advance and just maintain concentration and then continue with the so and so. But um, the universal spell, you can cast it and it'll be good for the duration, you know, as I said. Or just cast the dimensional spell. Boom, I need this, you know. Oh, great, Sidorak, please put up a shield for me because, yeah, man, you awesome. You might. You might want to try it. <laughs> um, anyway, all of this matters because, you, like I said, you can't move. You are perfectly susceptible to get your butt handed to you. Your butt straight handed to you. So keep all these things in mind while you're casting group spells. Uh, but for the most part, group spells should not necessarily... Uh, I would say that if there's just two people in the spell... That counts as a standard group spell. You now don't have to worry about uh, them being able to psychically resist whatever it is that you're going to do. Uh, if you've got three people in a spell, technically, by the rules, that doesn't do anything else for you. So, Professor Bill says, for every person you have above two in your group, I would say add plus one column shift to the effectiveness or the range or whatever it is that you want. Not the whole entire thing, because that would probably be a little bit too much. But if you want to go to like plus one column shift to damage or plus one column shift to the, um, you know, the effectiveness of being able to, you know, bind someone, you know, say you're going to be doing, uh, let's be realistic. If your psyche is incredible forward and you got the, um, the Crimson Bands of Sidorak on someone, you probably wouldn't be too adverse to having uh, uh, four people instead of two people in your group to bring it up to Monster City 5, right? Because, I mean, I'm just saying. Monster City 5, you're feeling a little bit safer than Incredible 40, right? If the Rhino is rampaging, who do you want uh, grappling the Rhino? Spider-Man or Ben Grimm? Exactly. So... Keep all that in mind and maybe start kind of trying to consider getting a fifth person in there because an earthly is even better. Just remember, you can't go past uh, shift Z because no, <laughs> that's that's the cutoff. It shows in the universal table. We talked about that in the earlier parts of these videos. So that's pretty much it, man. Uh, there's a lot that you can do with group spells. Make sure that there's something that people would actually, that your players would actually want to do with them. If you're a player, make sure it's something that can actually add to the flavor of the game. Because when you make it interesting for the judge, the judge is more likely to say, yeah, sure, go for it. Um, but you got to keep the balance by making sure that you understand that the players are very vulnerable while they're casting this spell. And I say, rather than limiting what they can do, Limit the amount of time that they've got to do it. You now have to, one round minimum, if everybody succeeds their roles, for attenuating your minds, another round for attenuating the magic, all right? And then, then you got to actually cast the magic and how long are you going to keep the magic going? And plus, how many rounds do you actually have to set up the spell in the first place? Do you need, um, what do you call it, a, a baphomet or a, a, um, a pentagram? You know, do, do you feel like you need the spiritual protection? Do you do you think that you're probably going to need the shields up, you know what I'm saying? Or are you, are you safe doing it in the Sanctum Sanctorum or whatever house of mysteries that, you know, you got working for you? That's on you guys. That's on you guys. So, food for thought. All right, guys. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed. <laughs>
Thank <laughs> you.